Climate change is gradually forcing humanity to develop sustainable methods to preserve the Earth, and experts believe that, in order to alleviate this situation, global carbon emissions must be reduced to zero by 2050, which is where green hydrogen, a clean energy alternative to fossil fuels, comes into play. Africa, especially the Sahara Desert and north of the continent, has long been lauded for its ability to generate enormous amounts of renewable energy due to its dry environment and wide areas of terrain. For decades, several European companies in particular have viewed the Sahara as a possible source for solar energy generation, with the potential to provide a significant portion of Europe's energy needs. Although several ambitious projects such as the Desertec project, which aimed to cover the Sahara with massive solar panels, failed due to cost and neocolonialism concerns, there is now a new current shift in trend, with Africa being targeted to harness green hydrogen projects. Our video today will discuss and outline all of the important points and stakeholders involved in the current rush for the green hydrogen revolution across the continent. As always, make sure to give the video a like and subscribe to our channel if you're new here. Hydrogen is the universe's most abundant element, but here on Earth it doesn't appear pure in nature and requires energy to separate. The most common technique is to extract hydrogen from water, which is two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. This technology is based on the generation of hydrogen, a universal, light and highly reactive fuel, through a chemical process known as electrolysis. This method uses an electrical current to separate the hydrogen from the oxygen in water. If this electricity is obtained from renewable sources energy are produced without emitting carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Green hydrogen has many uses. Among others, it can be used in industries and can be stored in existing gas pipelines to power household appliances. It can transport renewable energy when converted into a carrier such as ammonia, a zero-carbon fuel for shipping, for example. Hydrogen can also be used with fuel cells to power anything that uses electricity, such as electric vehicles and electronic devices. And unlike batteries, hydrogen fuel cells don't need to be recharged and won't run down, so long as they have hydrogen fuel. With all the benefits mentioned, it must also be noted that green hydrogen production is prohibitively expensive. According to report by a German magazine International Transportation, as of 2019, there were approximately 407 hydrogen fueling stations worldwide, with 170 in Europe, 163 in Asia, and 66 in North America. This demonstrates the lack of proper infrastructure for transporting, storing, and converting hydrogen to usable energy. Another challenge is that after hydrogen is processed, 70% of its efficiency is lost during production. However, this is not as concerning, because hydrogen is energy-dense, which means it can hold a lot of energy in a small volume. Hydrogen is also a very reactive element, which means it can only exist when combined with other elements, such as water. The current industry extracts hydrogen from fossil fuels using a process known as steam methane, which is a polluting process that emits approximately 843 metric tons of carbon dioxide. The ammonia, methanol, iron, steel, oil and transportation industries will all benefit from decarbonization. By 2050, the hydrogen market is expected to generate $2.5 trillion in direct revenue. Europe is currently leading when it comes to going green, and as part of their strategy, they included hydrogen in their European Green Deal in 2020, with local production and establishing a steady supply from Africa. The EU announced a 140 billion euro hydrogen plan, while Germany announced a 9 billion euro package. China, Korea, and Japan are also on the move, with plans to invest in fuel cells for their car fleets, converting combustion engines to hydrogen engines. The United States intends to invest $1.7 trillion to achieve 100% clean energy by 2050, as well as up to $100 million in hydrogen production and fuel cell technology research and development. Existing pipelines from Morocco to Spain and Algeria to Italy, which were originally used for fossil fuel gas, could be used in the future for green hydrogen gas.
According to experts, in the transportation industry, hydrogen will most likely replace gasoline and diesel, as well as electric vehicles. Honda, Toyota, and Hyundai have already created hydrogen-powered vehicles. At the end of 2019, there were 18,000 vehicles on the road that used hydrogen fuel cells. Total, France's oil and gas company, and Nikola Motors have also invested in fuel cells. In the energy sector, hydrogen will be used to store renewable energy for an extended period of time. With all these exciting development, African is once again on the spotlight, as the continent provides the ideal location to harness this technology. The vast Sahara Desert in North Africa has long been regarded as a potential renewable energy region due to its dry climate and land area covering 9,200,000 square kilometers. The Kalahari Desert which covers an area of approximately 930,000 square kilometers between Botswana, Namibia, and South Africa has also become a region of great interest for the green hydrogen technology. Desertec, a company founded in Germany in 2019, aims to provide climate protection, energy security, and development by generating sustainable power from locations where renewable energy sources are abundant. Desertec Industrial Initiative launched the MENA Hydrogen Alliance in early 2020 to assist in the establishment of energy projects in the Middle East and North Africa region that produce hydrogen for export. This came after the company's initial quest to establish a small solar farm in the Sahara Desert, capable to provide up to 15% of Europe's electricity using DC transmission cables failed. The German government has also approached the Democratic Republic of the Congo, South Africa, and Morocco to develop a carbon-free fuel derived from renewable energies for export to Europe and is looking into other areas and potential countries that are particularly suited to the production of such fuels. According to a recent report, the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Germany could soon enter an energy partnership that would see the Central African country provide hydropower capacity to produce green hydrogen for Germany's decarbonization plans. The planned Inga 3 dam at the Congo River could help combining climate action and development cooperation, the German government's representative for Africa, Gunter Nook, revealed this in an interview. The dam with a potential capacity of 44,000 megawatts could help Germany bridge the significant gap between Germany's projected hydrogen demand and the modest production capacities at home, but still exceed power demand in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Last June, Australian billionaire Andrew Forrest was also linked to expressing interest to develop the world's largest hydropower project in the Democratic Republic of Congo. The dam, which carries a $103.8 billion price tag, aligns with Forrest's move to diversify the iron ore mining company into a global leader in green energy and green hydrogen over the next decade. According to reports, Forrest will raise about $100 billion in funding through his company and an array of international investors and lenders looking to participate in the green energy revolution. In an interview, Morocco's ambassador to Germany, Zohar al revealed that the Moroccan government agreed with Germany in 2020 to build the continent's first industrial-scale green ammonia plant. Green hydrogen is produced from 100% renewable energy, allowing Morocco to harness its solar and wind power. This move is expected to transform the country's renewable energy sector. Morocco intends to launch a tender for a 100 MW green hydrogen electrolyzer project in 2022. Tarek Hamain, head of development of Morocco Agency for Sustainable Energy and member of the Executive Committee, also revealed that they have secured financing and hope to begin construction next year, with the plant expected to be operational by 2025. In July last year, Energy and Utilities reported that Consolidated Contractors Company of Greece and Fusion Fuel of Ireland were planning to develop a green hydrogen-powered ammonia project in Morocco. By 2026, the project is expected to produce 183,000 tons of green ammonia and 31,000 tons of green hydrogen per year. Fusion Fuel's off-grid solar-to-hydrogen Hevo solar generator will provide the green hydrogen. Following the completion of a feasibility study, work on the project is expected to begin in 2022. The project is expected to cost $850 million in total. 
the scheme's offtake agreement will be managed by commodity trading company Vittle. Similarly, Egypt, which intends to reach 42% of renewable share in its energy mix by 2035 has signed a few memorandum of understanding, among others with Siemens Energy with the Egyptian Electricity Holding Company, to jointly develop a pilot project, compromising 100 to 200 megawatts of electrolyzer capacity. With Siemens Gamisa holding 91% market share of Egypt's installed wind power capacity, this agreement represents another strong commitment of the group's vision to support the country's ambitions. Sasol, a South African company, has also announced plans for a multi-billion dollar investment in a hydrogen plant. After signing a memorandum of understanding with the Northern Cape Economic Development, Trade, and Investment Promotion Agency and a diverse range of stakeholders for revenue investment, Sasol announced its involvement in the Namakwa Special Economic Zone's Bigobe Green Hydrogen Project which has the potential to deliver more renewable gas to export markets, create jobs, and boost the country's economic growth. The Northern Cape appears to be the ideal green hydrogen and ammonia export center, according to a feasibility study conducted by Sasol and Industrial Development Corporation. The project has the potential to produce up to 400 kilotons of hydrogen per year, but it will require 9 gigatons of renewable energy to do so. The project will enable South Africa to realize its global potential as a large-scale exporter of green hydrogen, green ammonia, and byproducts. They also intend to use green hydrogen as a sustainable aviation fuel in the future. During an interview with CNBC Africa, James Nayup, Namibia's economic advisor to the President and Hydrogen Commissioner, explained how the hydrogen revolution fits into Namibia's Harambe Prosperity Plan too. President Hage Jaingob is the one who devised the Harambe Prosperity Plan too, a social economic development plan. The Harambe Prosperity Plan too, under the section of economic advancement, aspires to develop a green and blue hydrogen economy in Namibia in order to industrialize the country. Namibia currently consumes between 620 and 640 megawatts of electricity, with South Africa providing 40% of the power. The Green Hydrogen Project aims to produce 5,000 megawatts of renewable energy. The Namibian government intends to collaborate with the private sector to build a green hydrogen power plant, and the feasibility study will be completed by 2023. The project will cost around $8 billion, and Namibia has already set aside 150% of its GDP in institutional savings. Once the project is completed, Namibia intends to use pipeline system to export green hydrogen to South Africa, Europe, and neighboring countries Botswana, Zimbabwe, and Zambia, as well as produce green ammonia and urea for fertilizer production and sell green electrons to Southern African power. According to their pre-visibility study, they identified the ports of Walvis Bay and Luteritz as potential destinations for green hydrogen and ammonia exports. Southern Africa is home to the world's largest desalination plant, which produces brine that can be used to produce hydrochloric acid once hydrogen is added to the mixture. The governments of Namibia and Botswana, in collaboration with USAID and the United States, have signed a memorandum of intent to build a mega solar power plant to power the green hydrogen plant. The gas pipeline is already in place, as Namibia actively imports carbon-emitting power from South Africa, Zimbabwe, and Zambia. The only thing left to do is reverse the flow of electrons and instead export green hydrogen to these countries. Late last year, the government of Mauritania signed a Memorandum of Understanding to Progress Project Nauer, a green hydrogen development of up to 10 gigawatts. The agreement signed with Chariot is in line with Mauritania's objective to become a world leader in the production of green hydrogen. Chariot has deployed its in-house team to immediately commence work on assessing the wind and solar resources, environmental impact, as well as macroeconomic and social impact studies. The project has been given exclusivity over an onshore and offshore area totaling approximately 14,400 square kilometers to carry out pre-feasibility and feasibility studies with the intention of generating electricity from solar and wind resources to be used in electrolysis.
Project Nower, which takes advantage of Mauritania's world-class solar and wind resources, has the potential to make the country the cheapest green hydrogen producer in Africa and one of the world's leading producers and exporters of green hydrogen and its derivative products, all while being close to large European markets. With all the excitement about all these huge proposed and upcoming projects in various locations in Africa, there are concerns from skeptics about the benefits of such project to Africa. Based on previous experiences with such costly and capital-intensive projects, the investment results in the recipient country incurring more debt. These projects are being scrutinized to see if it will result in the looting of local resources, the dispossession of communities, environmental damage, or even the entrenchment of corrupt elites, given that its top energy investors and companies gained power and wealth during the colonial era by exploiting Africa for raw materials. The 19th century scramble for Africa saw the great powers rush to control lands on the continent so they could exploit natural resources. Today, there is a new scramble for Africa taking place, and the continent has again become a vital arena of strategic and geopolitical competition between the world's superpowers. European nations established a massive economic structure to take riches, raw materials, and slave labor from the African continent throughout the colonial era. Although African colonies gained independence in the 20th century, the system was never abolished, rather, it was changed, frequently with the assistance of local post-colonial authoritarian governments and elites. Many people now fear that the EU's green transition would continue to feed this exploitative economic system, benefiting European big business at the expense of local communities in the African nations with whom they collaborate. The new proposed and upcoming projects suggest new hydrogen supply lines, but this does little to ease these concerns. In Africa, the big players' fossil fuel companies continue to take local resources and move wealth out of the continent using the same oppressive economic systems that were in place during colonialism, leaving little to nothing to local communities. With all these concerns, Africa stand to benefit as Europe set a high target to decarbonize. By 2050, Europe's energy system is expected to be largely based on variable renewables, and hydrogen will be indispensable for transport and storage. Europe will not be able to produce all of its renewable energy domestically due to its small area and high population density. As a result, it is expected that a significant portion of the required hydrogen will be imported. To this end, all these launched ambitious hydrogen strategies by European countries will play a crucial role in driving development in Africa. In the coming decades, there is a lot of potential for deeper cooperation between Europe and Africa, and the two regions could grow more intertwined. Africa will gain from the launch of the European Green Deal, which focuses on Europe and external collaboration with neighboring regions. North African countries because of their resource potential, closeness, and current commercial links, may be among the first in the African Union to sell green hydrogen to Europe. In North Africa, according to ARENA's Renewable Energy Blueprint for Africa 2030, growth capacity of 70 gigawatts of wind and 50 gigawatts of concentrated solar power and photovoltaics is feasible. Existing pipes can be upgraded, and new pipelines to transport green hydrogen from North Africa to Europe can be developed as the market matures. All these and many more place the continent in a better position to benefit from the green hydrogen deals. Furthermore, this African hydrogen approach would create economic growth, future-oriented jobs and social stability in the African countries where these plants will be located. If you enjoyed this video and want more definitive information about exciting trends in Africa, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our new channel, The New Africa Daily, your ultimate guide to staying informed on the latest in trending topics, facts, politics and more in Africa, within minutes.